Hi, I'm Chrissy of Letters by Chrissy, and I'm going to show you how to digitize your hand lettering using Photoshop and Illustrator. So we're going to start with an image like this one and finish with an image like this one. So we'll first open our hand lettering image in Photoshop and if you need help with transferring the hand lettering into Photoshop, I have a tutorial written about this in the full blog post and I'll link that in the description below. For now though in Photoshop, the purpose of using this program is to clean up the image and then to remove the background to prepare for vectorizing the image in Illustrator. The first thing we need to do in Photoshop is to unlock this layer and that'll let us move it around and play with it later. In order to unlock the layer, we need to double click on it in the Layers panel. And if you can't see the Layers panel, you can go to Window, Layers to show it. Double click on it, press Enter, now your layer is unlocked. The first adjustment we'll, we'll make to play with the layer is to straighten it. So to do this, I'm going to drag Guides down quite roughly just to check whether my lettering is straight to see if I need to make any adjustments there. And if you can't see your rulers, you can press Command R to toggle them on and off. I can see that my lettering is a little sloping upwards, so I'm going to press Command T to get the transform tool. Right click, press warp and then drag those areas a tiny bit down to straighten them. I'm not going to be too picky because it's quite a relaxed piece, but you might need to be more picky depending on what your piece is. Press Enter to accept whenever you're done. You can also rotate the image here as well. So by going com Command T and just dragging those little bits. Then once you're finished, you can press Command H to hide those guides. And now we're going to move on to preparing to erase the background. So in order to do this, we want as much contrast as possible between the foreground and the background. We want to make the lettering as black as possible and the background as white as possible. And there are a couple of ways we're going to do this. The first is by using the Levels tool. To do this, we press Command L, drag the right slider to the left. This will make the whites whiter and then drag the left slider to the right to make the blacks blacker. So we're essentially increasing the contrast. Another way to do this is to use the burn tool, and the shortcut for this is O, but it's also located just here. Make sure it's set to shadows, and pay attention to what the exposure is. For this image, it's fine to use an exposure of 100%, but you may need to use a lower exposure but I can use this to burn any areas of my image that I want to be a little bit darker to make sure that we don't accidentally erase them later on when we're getting rid of the background. Now we're going to make the image black and white just to simplify it. So press Command U to bring up the hue and saturation panel and drag the saturation slider all the way to the left. Then we want to crop the image and erase any little bits that we obviously don't want. So I'm going to crop it like so. And I'm going to zoom in to see if there are any eraser marks or little bits like this that I don't want in my final image. That looks pretty good. So we can move on to erasing the background. Uh, we need to make a new layer, so you can press Command Shift N to make a new layer, or just click this icon here in the Layers panel. And we're going to fill this layer using G on your keyboard for the paint bucket with a bright color. And this will allow us to see if we've missed erasing any areas of background later. 
The tool that I like to use to erase the background is the color range tool. So I've set up a keyboard shortcut for using the color range tool. Um, my keyboard shortcut is Command Shift R and you can set that in edit keyboard shortcuts if you would like to do a similar thing. But you can also get it by going to select and color range. When you're here, set the fuzziness to about 120 to start off with and use the eyedropper to select somewhere that's the background of your image, so the area that you want to erase. Press enter to accept and you'll see that all of that area is, is selected. Then just press delete to get rid of it, press command D to deselect and you'll see that some of your background is erased. The rest of the process is really just playing around with that same step and just adjusting it slightly depending on what your image is like. So for me I'm going to zoom in and just check that nothing has been erased that I wanted to be there. So you can see that some of these decorations are a little faded so I'm going to go back in with the burn tool and remember the shortcut for that is O just to make sure that in the next round of erasing I don't accidentally get rid of these lighter bits. Now when I think that I'm finished with erasing the background what I've found is that it's not normally all erased. The foolproof way of checking is to add a stroke to this layer by pressing FX in the layers panel, selecting stroke, and you want to set it to a very bright color that contrasts with your background so you can see it easily, and make it quite a thick stroke just to make it more obvious for yourself. Now you can see that I have all of these little dots left over of the background, which I can then use the eraser tool to get rid of, but I wouldn't have noticed them before. I would have been lulled into this false sense of security that my background was totally gone. So that's a really nice trick to have. I'm not going to worry too much about getting rid of every single dot because in the vectorization process, they will probably be ignored and if they're not, we can very easily delete them. So I won't be too picky about these areas here. The last step in Photoshop is just to make any adjustments to the layout of your image that you want. I've never been particularly happy with the spacing of the words and the size of them. So I'm going to use a mixture of different tools to change that. The main tools I'll be using are the marquee tool, which is M on your keyboard. And this will allow me to select a particular area of that layer and only move that area. I'll move it by pressing the V tool. You can see what that does. And then I'm also going to use the transform tool, Command T, to make the text bigger or smaller. Once you're finished with adjusting your image, turn off the background layer and save your image somewhere easy to access because we're ready to move on to Illustrator. Leave Photoshop open though because we'll be coming back to it in a little while. The purpose of using Illustrator is to vectorize our artwork. And this basically means that you can enlarge it as much as you want and it won't ever become pixelated. So it's made up of lines instead of dots. And in particular, it's made up of vectors instead of dots. The tool that we're going to be using is the image trace tool. You can also use the pen tool to vectorize, and this is really lovely and precise, but image trace is a much faster option. So for a very complex piece like this, which would probably take a couple of hours to use the pen tool to vectorize, it takes a couple of minutes to use image trace instead. It's normally found here in the side panel, but you can also access it via window image trace if it's not there. You can see that it's not an active panel at the moment, and in order to make it accessible, we need to click on our artwork, in particular the foreground of our artwork. 
And the main options I'll be adjusting are the paths option and also the ignore white. We want to save our image with a transparent background so that we can overlay it onto another photo. So we definitely always want to ignore white, unless you want the white background to be a part of your image. The paths tool we adjust in order to make the lettering more handmade looking. So the higher the number, the closer to 100% it is, the more raw and hand done it will look because it will be, the lines will be fitting really closely to your original hand lettering. So you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to go to object, artboards and fit to artwork bounds to make it bigger. Now you can see that that process actually erased quite a few of my illustrations. So the way I'm going to fix that is by increasing the threshold so that more of the image will be made black and less of it will be left white or transparent. Just keep adjusting these options. They'll all be different for different images. Because it's quite sketchy, I don't mind that these lines are gone. That's why I didn't pay too much attention to them in Photoshop. And I am pretty happy with that. And you can also tell that those dots before, they're all gone from this area. So that's really good that that worked. We can save the image when we're happy with it. And then we'll move back into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, we want to open the background image, the one that we're going to overlay the hand lettering onto, and then go to File, Place, and place the vectorized image. And you're finished. Well done, you just vectorized your hand lettering. If you're interested in reading the full article, I'll link it in the description below. It'll be especially helpful if you need help getting your hand lettering into Photoshop to begin with. And I also list, list some of my favorite digitizing tutorials that I've watched in the past that this is really influenced by. Thanks for watching and I hope that it was helpful for you.